So there's no problems there. That says that you can plug in any number within the real numbers and you'll be just fine. plug in any number I want to this problem and get something out of it that's reasonable, that's defined. Okay, uh, can I plug in zero? Yeah, yeah, even though you know, we can't have zero in the denominator, if I plug it in, well, I'm not getting zero in the denominator. What numbers can't I plug in? One. Sure, now you're doing this in your head, but I want to show you, here's how you find domain in general. You look for situations where you could have problems. Those situations are roots, square roots specifically, maybe fourth roots, and denominators. To find out what your domain is, really, here's what you're doing in your head. You're saying, I want to make sure that I know that if this denominator is equal to zero, I've got a problem here. Now, the zero product property is going to come up with your answers. It says, I know x minus 1 could possibly equal zero, and give me a problem. I know that x minus 3 could possibly equal zero, and give me a problem. If I solve those, I'm going to get your answers of 1 and 3. Mathematically, that's what you're doing right here. Do you guys see, see what you're doing? You're, you're saying, I can't plug in 1, I can't plug in 3, because if I do, bam, it's going to give me 0. And even if I multiply by something, it's still going to give me 0, and I know I can't have 0 on the denominator of any fraction. So, by setting a denominator equal to 0, or not equal to 0 is how I used to teach in, in some other classes, you can do this too. I know it can't be equal to 0, therefore that can't be 0. That can't be zero, and these two things, I cannot have x equal to zero. That's another way you can do it. By setting that equal to zero, solving it down, you find out your problems within your domain for denominators. So here we'd say x is all real numbers. Except, or but, x does not equal one, and x does not equal three. Please don't ignore that does not equal. Okay, because if you do this, I know I, I just used the equal sign, that's what a lot of you have been practicing <coughs> doing for your math careers, but if you do this, except x equals one and three, that says one does work. Do you see that? We have to have the not equal to. So once you find those problem numbers, put the not equal to. We're gonna find out later that what these things are, if you cannot simplify them out of your function, those are gonna be asymptotes, vertical asymptotes. So this is not going to be defined at x equals 1. It's not going to be defined at x equals 3. Those are either going to go up like that. Looks like I'm doing my dance moves. But that's what they're doing. They're going to go up at an infinity, down at infinity, something like that. Do you guys feel okay with this particular domain? Let's try a couple more. I want to get through a few more problems here. Um, okay, how about this one? How about tan x? Tan x. Is that defined everywhere? Sine goes like this, right? And cosine goes like this. Does tangent go like this? How's tangent go? It makes those, those kind of weird S's of the snakes all the way down your paper. Why does it do that? Why does it do that? Wasn't, wasn't uh, Rhetorical. Why does it do that? Sure, it's undefined. Why? Why is it undefined at certain points? Skipping the x value. Fill this in. You remember how I just told you how functions aren't defined if they have denominators where those denominators equal zero? Well, check it out. If we if we look at this, this is tangent, right? If we set this denominator. I, I'm going to use the not equal to zero because we know we should not have that equal to zero. If cosine x can't be equal to zero, which is what I'm saying here, what values of cosine make it equal to zero? Where? Do it in terms of radians. Pi over 2 is one of them. And 3 pi over 2. So x can't equal, that's why I'm using this right here, x can't equal pi over 2. x can't equal, if you keep on going, you're going to get, let's see, for you guys, here's pi over 2, cosine 0, true? You're going to keep going to 3 pi over 2. 
if you keep going around the insert, you're going to get a lot of different values. It's going to keep repeating both backwards and forwards every pi from that. So pi over 2 plus or minus uh, pi, k pi, where, where k can be positive or negative integer. It's going to give every part where tangent is not defined because cosine will be 0 at those points. Do you see why this, this works the way it does? Do you see why the tangent is not defined at those? Simply because cosine is not defined at those points. You guys see that? Kind of neat, right? It doesn't matter if the numerator is equal to zero. Sine zero over something, that's defined. That's okay. But something over zero, that's not okay. Okay, last one we're going to talk about, and then we'll call it a day. Do I have any denominators here? Any denominators? Anything over anything? Well, I'm good as far as that goes, but man, I got a square root. So we're going to be having some trouble doing this square root. What do you know about things, the radicand, that's what's inside the radical. What do you know about the radicand of square roots? They have to be, they got to be positive. So when you're dealing with these roots, denominators, I showed you how to do that. What you're going to do is set the denominator equal to zero or not equal to zero. Solve that down. That will give you your problems in natural domain. Uh, as far as the radicals go, you know for a fact that this thing is going to have to be bigger than or equal to zero. You know what, we're going to start this next time. I'll show you how to do that. All right. So we're going to continue finding some domains and some ranges of some functions. Now, now, basically, when you're finding what I said was the natural domain, that's just really what works in a function. What we've got to do is look for our problem areas. If we can define our problem areas, that really defines what we can plug in and specifically what we can't plug into a function. Really what that comes down to for us is you're always looking for denominators and roots. If you have denominators, you know that at some points you might be undefined. If you have some roots, there might be some ranges of numbers that you can't even plug into your function. So with us up here, we're going to have an issue inside that root. What do you know about square roots? I think we might have talked about this last time. What do you know about those? What numbers can't you have in there? Negative. Now, can you plug in a negative here? Yeah, you might be able to, provided that when you work it through the, the radicand, the inside of your radical, it's positive. That'd be fine. Really what we want, with any root, with any square root, we want the inside part, the radicand, to be greater than, could it be equal to zero? Is that okay to have a root with a zero inside of it? Yeah. Sure. So, so really we want this. If you remember from last time we had some denominators, what we did was we set our whole denominator equal to zero, or I even used the not equal to zero because it can't be zero. And you can solve it that way with the equal to zero, finding out your problems. With our roots, what we're going to do is make the inside greater than or equal to zero. We're going to find out those ranges that work. Oh my gosh, that's a quadratic inequality. That's math. See, that's inter intermediate algebra days for you. How do you do that? What would you do in order to solve that problem? Factor. We would definitely have to factor at least. You probably can see that because it's a quadratic, right? Go ahead and factor that. See what you get. Minus 3 minus 2, did you all get that too? Okay, we passed factoring. <laughs> scared if we didn't. My gosh. All right. How do we do the rest of it though? Set it equal to 0. If we set each one equal to 0, you know what it's going to tell us? It's going to say that x is greater than or equal to 3, and it's going to say that uh, x is greater than or equal to 2. Do you guys see that? which actually is not going to be the right thing for us. I know you want to, right, because you're so ingrained in saying, make this equal to zero, make this equal to zero by the zero product property. However, we don't have the zero product property because that's not an equation. That's an inequality. If you know how to deal with your inequality, here's what you do. You do find the places where x would equal zero. You kind of temporarily set it equal to zero in your head. You find those points. Hopefully in your head right now are the points x equals two and x equals three. Do you guys see those points? Here's what you do with this. This is called a basic version of a sign analysis test. So we know that x equals 3 and x equals 2 are some important points for us. Here's what you do with those points. 
I want you to make up a number line. Put those points in order on your number line. So which one's going to come first for us, going from left to right? Sure. This is basically a graphic representation of, of your interval, what's going to work in your, your function here. So notice what we've done. We've said, okay, we know the inside. It's got to be bigger than or equal to zero. We factored it. We have some key points here. We've got x equals 3, x equals 2. We put them on a number line. Now, here's how to determine when you're going to be okay in your function when you're not. If you test a point for each of these intervals, how many intervals do we have? Yeah, it's like you're slicing bread, right? If you have a loaf of bread and you cut it once, you get two intervals. If you cut it twice, you get three intervals. So you get three pieces of bread. Here we have our three intervals. If you test each of those intervals with a point in your expression here, it's going to tell you whether it's positive or negative. That's going to tell you what you can plug into your function and what you can't. So l let's try this. Can you, and you'll see what I mean after we plug in our first point. Can you tell me what is the point uh, to the left of two? Zero. zero. That's the easiest one to plug in. I want you right now to test zero. So we're going to test zero. Test zero on the inside of my function. If you plug in zero, how much are you going to get? Six. six. Wait, positive six or negative six? Positive. So would you say that we came up with a positive answer? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so this is going to be a plus. What that signifies is that every number, try it if you want, every number to the left of two is going to give you a positive answer. Are you with me on that? Every, have you tried one? Go for it. You can try it. Try negative, any negative number, that's going to give you a positive there. Do you believe me? If you don't, well, just spend the rest of your life trying out numbers, and then you'll come back to me. I believe you when you're like 80 years old and I'm dead. Uh, you put it on my epitaph or my letter or something. So we've tested every number over here. We know that every one of them is going to be a positive. The reason why we know this, if you think about it, it's a quadratic, right? And you've just found the roots, right? It's actually an upward-facing quadratic. So it goes like this. Positive, 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 dips down at 2. Negative, 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 comes back up at 3. Positive, positive, positive. That's what we're finding out right now. We want the sections that are positive because we know we can only plug in positives, and, or sorry, get out positives for a square root. That's the idea. That's what a sign analysis test will do for you. Uh, how about a point that's greater than three? What are you going to try? Five. Five or, or four. Try, try five or four. The only points you really can't try are two and three. Why? What are two and three going to give you? Yeah, yeah. yeah that's not going to tell you anything, right? That's not positive or negative. Try, try four right now on your own. Plug that in and see what you get. You can do it in your head if you want. I don't really care about the actual value. All I'm really concerned about is whether you're getting a positive or negative. What'd you get? Positive. Yeah, and you really should. This is a quadratic. It should alternate. So you tested four, and you got a plus. Can you give me a point between 2 and 3? Because we've got to test a point in there, too, just to make sure we have this right. 2 and a half. 2 and a half. Great. Try 2 and a half. Use your calculator if you want. Bet your million dollars is going to be negative. You want to take the bet? No, it's quadratic, right? It's positive here, it's positive here, it's got to be negative there if it crosses the x-axis. So it's going to be a negative. How many people feel okay with what we've done so far? So can you just set this equal to zero and this equal to zero and, and get it right?